Exactly one year ago, March 20th, 2020, was a scary time for the world. We had just entered the beginnings of this global pandemic that, one year later, we're still stuck in. But there was definitely one good thing that happened that day. Animal Crossing New Horizons was released. So exactly one year later, I'd like to detail my top 11 things I enjoy about Animal Crossing New Horizons. After all, it has literally been 6 months since my last top 11 list. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 11, there's the multiplayer option of inviting other players to your island. Using the Dodo airline service from Orville and Wilbur, this allows you to bring other people to your island. So I've invited my cousin to my island a couple of times and he can do things like exchange fruit trees that are native to your island. So now I have orange trees and cherry trees growing on my island. And because your island is relatively big, one of the things I did was play virtual hide and seek. And as it turns out, my brother found a pretty good spot to hide, as Blathers' museum has a lot of places in it. So if you ever want to play virtual hide and seek, pro tip. At number 10, we have the change in seasons. I know this is something that's a part of every Animal Crossing game, so it's not that cool. But I do like how it corresponds with the weather I'm currently experiencing. For example, the weather is starting to warm up here, and sure enough, it's now springtime in Animal Crossing. So as the snow goes away in that game, it goes away in real life as well. Besides, each new season brings with it new critters to catch, adding for new opportunities in your Critterpedia. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And by the way, time traveling is the lowest of the low. Don't do that. You go with what season it's currently at. At number 9, we have the Mario update. The most recent Nintendo Direct brought with it the bitter disappointment of no Mario Kart 9. But the consolation for me, I guess, was that Animal Crossing had a free update full of Mario stuff you can buy in the shopping catalog. And so I bought all sorts of stuff for my island. Power-ups, a Mario outfit, Mario shoes, a flagpole, a superstar, a one-up, even a thwomp. Uh, a coin too, I'm just thinking of all the things I bought. But probably the most useful thing I bought were two pipes. You see, you put one pipe on one side of the island and another pipe on the other side and you can transport quite easily. This Mario update shows that they still care about the game one year later, so it's definitely a reason to keep playing, especially if you're a Mario fan. At number 8 we have the easy ways to make a profit in this game. Oh, there's plenty of ways. For example, a good day of fishing and catching bugs that you've already caught can earn you some solid money with Timmy and Tommy at Nook's Cranny. You can dig money out of the ground, plant a money tree, and voila, your profits are tripled a few days later. You can hit rocks, and sometimes money will come out. At one time, I went to Money Island using a Nook Miles ticket, and believe me, that was a satisfying experience. You just hit rock after rock and get more and more money. And you literally start to hear Mario 1-Up sounds from all the money you get from hitting the rock. At number 7, we have my homie Tom Nook. This guy has got to be the most gracious landlord ever. I'll admit, I've been playing this game a little less frequently now, and yet he still never bothers me about how I'm probably late paying off my loan on house upgrades. He gives you all sorts of helpful advice to beat the game, so to speak, as getting KK Slider to perform a concert on your island gets the credit stroll. And I did that, so technically I feel like I beat the game, even though I acknowledge that that's not really a thing. But anyway, Tom Nook is a very supportive raccoon. The only thing I'm suspicious of is how do he and Isabella work 24 hours a day? I mean, even Nook's Cranny has closing hours. At number 6 we have DIY recipes. It seems you have an infinite amount of things to craft in this game. You can find your DIY recipes in all sorts of ways, whether it be finding a bottle washed up on the beach, chatting up a neighbor, or shooting a present out of the sky with your slingshot. Just make sure you don't shoot the present when it's over the water. That's a bad idea. Now it's unclear just how many DIY recipes are in New Horizons, but it's likely in the thousands. And you know what that adds? Replay value. Gotta craft them all. Okay, I'm probably not going to be able to craft every recipe in this game. I'm not sure that's humanly possible, unless of course you play this game like 10 hours a day. At number 5, we have Blathers the Owl. Now I've said in my good thing, bad thing, and review of this game, that the dialogue is one of the few weak points in this game. Your neighbors are boring. They have nothing of value to say, and the only one I even kinda like is Billy. But the dialogue is somewhat redeemed by Blathers the Owl. 
He is the curator of the fabulous museum on your island, and he gives you plenty of interesting facts about the various creatures you give to him. I always love how he's scared of every bug, even if it's the most innocent looking thing. Regarding the bugs, he says, rest assured, we will take care of the wretched thing. I love how even though this is a family game, Blathers has the vocabulary of, oh, I don't know, Stewie Griffin. Not in terms of dirtiness, but in terms of just how advanced it is. At number four, we have the Nook Miles system. Now this is what makes you feel accomplished. You get Nook Miles for doing just about anything in this game. You can even get Nook Miles for spending Nook Miles. Now what exactly did Nook Miles get you? Well, Nook Miles have their own epic shopping catalog where I've bought a swimming pool from, but you really want to spend them on a Nook Miles ticket where you can get, where you can get a visit to one of many randomly selected islands. Yes, a lot of the islands feature the same old boring fish, fruit, rocks, etc. But it's worth it for that one time I landed on Money Island and a couple of times I've landed on Bamboo Island because you get to bring the bamboo back home and the money too. At number three, we have filling out your Critterpedia slash catching new creatures. Now this kind of factors in with Blathers the Owl here, but to me, catching a new creature is among the most satisfying things in Animal Crossing. And with the calendar turning to March, I've caught a couple new insects, a couple new fish, and a couple new sea creatures. Boy, is it satisfying. I mean, your character literally says yes whenever you catch a new thing. Now, sure, it involves some trial and error, particularly with the fishing. I mean, if I had a nickel for every time I caught a sea bass, I wouldn't beat Elon Musk or anything, but I might have enough to buy a mansion. But every time you do catch a new creature, you get to look up their stats in the Critterpedia for when they're active. I always find it cool when I catch something that's only active during a certain season or time of the day. Or both. At number two, we have the delightful music. I remember when I first popped in Animal Crossing New Horizons in December. I enjoyed the soothing music so much that I hardly noticed that it didn't really change much. Of course, I now realize I have the option to change the island tune, but I haven't even done that once because I always just enjoy whatever's playing. The calming music is in all sorts of YouTube compilations, and in this era of people having anxiety, which I can relate to, this music and this game are a good way of calming that down. Now, while most of the game goes for calming music, you can also get some catchy music from your homie KK Slider. One of my favorites is KK Neapolitan, so I personally recommend buying it. I got it spinning on the record player in my bedroom. Well, my bedroom in the game, not in real life. And finally, at number one, we have the graphics and art style. The common graphics and art complement the music so well, which obviously we just talked about the music. But seriously, this game is just gorgeous. The colors are so vibrant, everything looks so pretty. It's really hard to put into words, that's all I can really say. Of course, the fact that it's four different seasons, like I mentioned earlier, means that there's four uniquely beautiful times of the year. And before I got into this game, I always found the Four Seasons aspect super cool when it came to the Mario Kart track, Animal Crossing. So now that spring hath sprung, there's vibrant green grass, pretty flowers, bright critters, and all sorts of other great graphical things in your Animal Crossing islands. Okay, so one year later, what do you enjoy about Animal Crossing New Horizons? Let me know what you think about this game if you have it. Bye bye!